It's January 1st, 2015. Time for another video blog. We came here early. It's about 10.30, so... You can see the sun streaming in. It is frickin' cold. Without benefit of frickin' laser beams and frickin' sharks. It's been a very interesting two weeks. We had... A very wet and rainy Christmas up in the 50s, 60s, one of the warmest Christmases on records. Then three days ago we had a cold freeze. So it's been down in the teens, probably out here down in the single digits. So taking another look, the utility wire coming across, coming down there. Shot of the Jason Parcel going up the hill. to come up with a different camera. I'm going to show you what I'm, how I'm bundled up. <sighs> Some new wires. Looks like a, a tie-off. Things coming in. One of the things for me to do in the next couple of weeks is to start calling up cable, telephone. Gas company we've already taken care of, other utilities. Most of the siding is on. They haven't done the arch piece up top because they have something down in the basement they're dealing with it about. So here's the shot of the front of the house. We're going to take a slight detour off into the adjacent wetlands area. You can actually see the wet part of it because of the rain and then the hard freeze. frozen solid enough that Durin has no trouble at all walking on this ice. I tried getting on it and it trickled a few times. So I'm on the ice now. This is why hopefully this is a non-buildable lot. Going up to the adjacent property, there's some more black ice, a little bit of water through there. You can see they've got blue ribbons on the trees showing approximately the boundaries of where this wet stuff is. Let's go back and resume our usual tour. Because there are no workmen today, we took advantage of the driveway. So we pulled all the way in. Then we'll be practicing the turnaround and see how it works out. In the garage, there's a lot less siding than there used to be, and there's something new. There's drywall. Yes, they've been getting ready to do the drywall stuff. Say hi to your admiring audience. Yeah. Hard to see through all the birch trees and reflections. So, lots of work in the backyard as well. The propane tank is now completely covered. The trench has been filled in, and on the wall, the gas company has come out and hooked up the gas line going into the house. That's something, it's sort of a multi-stage process, burying the tank, getting it ready, laying lines, and then they come in and do the final hookup. So there's a kind of semi-flexible 
cable at the bottom, and then it comes into the cast iron gas pipe up here. So this part's sort of flexible down here. And then that's a regulator, whatever that does, it regulates something. Another exciting thing in the backyard for Trish is you can now see how big her porch is going to be. So you have the three footings in the lower corner, and then up top, the place where the porch is going to be getting attached to. Higher up, um, that's an outside electrical outlet. You can also see another outside electrical outlet on the bottom of the, the door there. A rare appearance. And then two lights are going up on either side of the porch. And then up in that corner there is a floodlight. And then the wire dangling down in the middle is where an external speaker can get hooked up. Continuing our walk through the back, there's septic system work being done. That's what all the trucks are being, all the uh, shovels. Hey! Down, down, all the way, stay, no jumping. Okay. Brief bit of dog discipline there. These are things that are going into the septic system. There's a trench coming out from the house. something coming out from there, working its way down, some sort of collector thingy, and then the septic field in the back. And he's been working on that the past two weeks, getting things in. There's black things underneath I have pictures of. The other outside work you can see, uh, vents where the pipes for the exhaust for the dryer and other things come in and the heat. Uh, there's a cast iron pipe where the gas is going to be coming for the external generator. The external generator will be out over here someplace. It has to be a certain number of feet away from the house. Also because it'll be noisy and this is going to be outside our bedroom. But you know, if there's a big enough storm that we want to have the electric generator running, then we'll have other things to worry about. I'll probably be up all night anyway. The panel where the electricity comes in, Trisha's comment, we have our own periscope. It's probably some kind of plumbing exhaust. Durin, this way. This way. So I unscrewed the front door for Durin's benefit. some metal foil up there. I don't know why. Probably because it's an exterior wall. And here you see more drywall and bags and bags of plaster. So today will be lots of drywall. Up in the ceiling we're not having a... that's where the chandelier is going to be going over the dining room table. Looking out the window. For some reason they've ripped holes in the plastic and they put these numbers on the windows. I have no idea why. The other thing they've done is on the floor they've started marking where the joists are and where the pipes are so that the plasterers will know where the studs are. So there's a lot of writing all over the place. Plasterboard for the bedroom. Looking out the window. Looking down the master bedroom into the closet and the bathroom. So here you can see on the floor, we've got P's for pipes, lines where the studs are going to be, where the studs are. And take a good look at the shower installation. Got the edge of it nailed in there. And then more nails over here. I guess those get covered up somehow. 
handle for where the faucet is. And this is the first time I'm not going to be able to cut through. I now have to expect that there actually is going to be a wall there. Get a look at the blown in insulation up top. Oh yes, and the place where the pendant is going to be hanging over the, the bathtub, the hot tub. At some point Trish will have a picture on her blog of what our purple star is going to look like. So back through the master bedroom. Can't even get into the bathroom at this point. Into the main room. Again, a lot of plasterboard. Don't know why they have that hole in the metal foil there. I think that since they're all done with the insulation blowing, they stopped when it got not being an exterior wall and instead it's interior. So they have insulation up on the ceiling. Looking in the ceiling of the kitchen, recessed lighting, track lighting, speakers, place on the floor where the counter is going to be. That's a template. More numbers on the windows. You can see they have wires snaking all over the place. I expect they'll be I'm not quite sure what they how they end up putting making the the wires work with the drywall but the other thing here a pocket door they have metal things there it's expensive but there really isn't a good way for the door to swing in or out one way or the other yeah, maybe alarm wires or something another look out the garage Trish sitting in her car waving at us. We'll go downstairs next. There's more light this time so we may actually be able to see something. We have some curvy bits here that are probably going over the door that will help finish up the siding our utility section. So furnace, water tank, patch panel. There are three breakers at the moment. I, Mike said there's electricity going to one uh, one socket on each floor and they're using that to power things. Uh, me, I'm just not touching anything anywhere. See the furnace here? I believe the ones covered in foil are the ones that are going to be blowing hot air to the parts of the house. For example, that's, those are going to the bedroom and the uh, front hall. That one's by the back, probably by the front door, or the dining room or something. With the furnace here, we're probably going to move the washer, uh, the freezer and second refrigerator into this far corner over here. Under the stairs are a whole lot of screens. We've got expensive screens. This is where I'm going to be setting up a whole, whole bunch of bookcases holding games, uh, war games and things. Big table, set things up. Depends on how, uh, how, deep, how much the furnace works and how much dust it spills up and other things. But I will be setting up this area here for not a work area, but a play area. If nothing else, it'll keep me going up and down the stairs. They've been going in and out the back door to get things, so you can take a look out here. We'll now work our way up two flights of stairs.
15 minutes. This is going to be one of the longer ones, but there's more to see now because of all the outside work. Coming upstairs, it's more of the same. Lots of plaster. Must have been a lot of fun hauling that up here. Stacking it up in the middle. More stuff for drywall. I'm sure people who've done this will recognize it and say, oh yeah, I know what he's going to be doing with all that. Taking a look down from the guest bedroom to the rest of the place. Now this is interesting. They tore out the insulation to get in there. I wonder why. Can't see anything. Maybe a heating thing. Back of the other bathroom. Trish is already planning on how she's going to be arranging furniture and stuff. She has a computer program. I'm going to be setting up tables for yarn over there. Desks are going to be in this corner. So we'll finish off taking a look out the window. And hope you enjoyed the blog.